I'll be talking to you about food, free food. Unless you're a gardener, food is what you buy. But for over two million years, that wasn't true. And nearly everyone was involved in seeking, finding, and acquiring the food that they ate. We are hardwired to seek, find, and eat. Observing and interacting with nature has been a critical part of the human experience. Just a couple hundred years ago, that ended abruptly. We've tamed our environment and the resources, the results are mostly good, but we also lost something of value, what was intrinsic to the human experience, a direct experience with critical components of our lives, finding, gathering, preparing, and consuming wild foods. More than ever, technology pulls us away from the experience of nature. I'm using technology to bring people back. Twitter and blogging can convey the basics of, what can I find outside today? And even more interesting, what can I find to eat? For most of human existence, these have been fundamental questions. Children still have an intuitive sense about wild food. Many of you may recognize this wood sorrel from long ago. Perhaps you remember the lemony sour taste? If you're a gardener, food is what you buy. Most kids learn faster and remember more than their parents do. This next slide is May apples. They grow in the woods around us, a tropical tasting fruit that is ripe in, well, it's right now, in July. So there are some tricks to this origin stuff, like you have to be careful of what the names are. But we're so out of touch with the food around us that many would not try the apples that I have here, free for the taking. They just don't look right. Many of us wouldn't recognize food in the wild, even if it was growing on a tree. And these apples, they taste really great. We can't go back to where we were thousands of years ago. It was a brutal time. But there are real benefits to wild crafting and foraging now. It's basic and satisfying. It's in our DNA to seek out wild food and experience pleasurable anticipation until we experience with critical community reinforcing. These are service berries that I've found at downtown Ann Arbor, right in front of the new controversial parking garage. Acorns provided 40 to 60 percent of the nutrients for people in this area with about, well, until about 200 years ago. Yet probably not many of you are planning to stock up for the winter. They take a lot of work collecting, extracting the meat, and there are tannins to be removed. Years ago, a bag of acorn meal would be placed in a stream to flush out the toxins. Nowadays, to conserve water, you could use an, un an otherwise unutilized stream in your home, the tank of your toilet. Every flush flushes tannins. Acorns no longer seem like human food, but they can be used in familiar ways. These were well worth the work. They included black raspberries that I can't go back to where we were a thousand. So I Twitter every day, I post what's edible, what's ripe, what part to pick, how to prepare the food, even some ideas on how to cook with it. What was once common knowledge. There's a daily reminder to go outside and some ideas of what you might find there. You probably know dandelion flowers, a weed valuable for liver support, digestive health, and with more beta carotene than carrots. Some people who, inter so people who interact with nature are more likely to notice their environment, they're more likely to care about their environment, and then they will act to protect what they found to be precious. These are red sumac fruits used as a Middle Eastern spice and for sumac-made beverage. Utilize stream in your home. The leaves outside, the leaves provide support for the lungs and also other uses. It can be hard work to gather plants. Here's a mound of burdock roots and the second appearance of my dog's nose, who's the ultimate larger. Humans have traditionally foraged with friends and family. It's just more fun. Like gardening, there's time invested in the preparation and processing of wild foods. It's time to invite your friends over, build community, and enjoy the process. You don't have to be efficient, and it's often really messy. In the next slide, you'll see pickles, herbal vinegars, and kimchi. I have an eight-year-old friend who started begging for my dandelion root pickles whenever he came over, so I taught him how to make his own. Now, that's a great way to deal with dandelions, and also with eight-year-old boys. <laughs> so one of my Twitter followers told me that when she, now when she goes outside, the world looks different just because she knows what to look for, and she's learned a few plants that she's enjoyed. This is personally loaded with alpha linoleic acid, one of the prized omega-3 fatty acids, also ECA and magnesium. It can help with depression, inflammation, and so much more. It's a common weed. Those mysterious plants that seem kind of dangerous, knowing that they aren't, and you can even eat them, just helps to make going for a walk, or in this case, a canoe trip on the Huron River, more fun, friendly, and always adventurous. 
To solve our climate crisis and to preserve the environment in the future, I'm helping people re-engage with the natural world. Humans have lived for millions of years connected to and dependent on nature. A simple idea to add back into our lives with profound consequences. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can find me, Wildcrafting, because I'd like to help change your perception of the world.